Pro Max, eyes eyes, killer for church. Step foot up in this jungle, leaves out in the herd. Cold on Percocet, city girl, chef sex, all eyes, no doubts, full of shells, candle wax, candle lit, bro, the head gas, shotty shot back, guess he was real when he got in, come back, round here, snakes, me gorilla man, no fear, yeah. bro, his face yeah. 10, gave him up, now he back to win, man, it's every day, on the floor, no other way, in the ghetto, better get you some cake, no birthday, no heart, no love, nigga, what is B, they can bring down bad love, just to leave leeway, might find yourself in the he say, she say, every day, all day, who am I, I say, I'm the hub postman, 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 I'm the She's back. She's hey. back. Legal Beagle herself. We got the legal beagle in the house in the middle room. Legal Beagle. Hey, I like Yay. that. Hey, <laughs> what's going on? Delita? How you doing today? I'm doing great. How you doing? I'm doing real well. i it's it's so such a, a treasure to have you with us today because we got so many things to discuss that's going on in our communities and around us in our, in our mm -hmm. sections and neighboring communities. But I like to say this without vision, vision without execution is hallucination. That is the wisdom <laughs> for the day. Vision without execution is hallucination. So, Miss Danita, tell us what's been going on with you since the last time we talked, because you, you're such a, uh, a treasure. <laughs> And, and you bring so much a wealth of information to the mailroom and the mailroom goes and the mailroom nation. They really appreciate having you on. So I had to go back and get you in. You know, let me give a couple of shout outs to a couple of guys. Shout out to the Postmaster General Marlena Williams, Derek Mobley, and also Team Mike March in the house. So without further ado, Mr. Dita, so talk to us. How you okay. doing? I'm doing well. Um. So I stayed busy. Um, back in July, I did a Freedom Fest. People came from New York, um, Chicago, North Carolina, oh God, Texas, it, Detroit. They came from everywhere. It wasn't a big crowd. We had a little over 100 because it was 4th of July weekend. And, you know, people were, you know, they were like, you shouldn't have did this on 4th of July weekend. I said, it's Atlanta. No matter what weekend I do it, y'all going to have a problem with it. If you're down for your love, when you're down for your love, when you're going to come, you know? Uh-huh. Um, so I had that. Um, I've had a few court dates coming up. My, um, I picked up this case out of Kansas. And it's a white kid. And I normally don't take um, sex offense cases. But I took this one because the kid committed the crime at 17 with girls only a year younger than him. And they were trying to hit him with child pornography. And when the mother, when his mother called me, it made me realize I, I wasn't paying attention to the fact that, um, you know, the legal age of consent, whether we like it or not, the legal age of consent in most states is 16 year old. So as old as we are, we can have sex with a 16 year old as long as they consent. We just can't take a picture of them naked or have a video of them naked. Now it's a, a federal offense and we're facing 30 to 70 years in prison. So when when Eric came upon came upon me and I started researching his case and me and his, his mama, boy, that's a New York Times is going to do this story. So keep your eyes out for it. But when we started researching the case, that's when it hit me like some of these people sitting in um, prison for child pornography. were not even aware of what they were doing. The law kind of tricked them. So that led me to come to the decision that I need to get in the congressional room. So I'm planning to run for Congress in 24. You're running for Congress? I'm running for Congress. First time ever awesome. running for any political seat. And I'm getting judged for it. People are telling me, you should start small. You should start like as a county solicitor what? or an alderman. And I said, I'm sorry. I'm not a county solicitor. I'm not an alderman. I'm a fucking U.S. senator. But we're going to start with Congress. <laughs> we're going to start there first. Right, 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 <laughs> right, right. You know, I believe in myself. I'm not, I'm not starting small. I don't care nothing about none of those positions. Congrats to you. I mean, you know, I'm. here's the thing. I'm running against a man, and he's black. 
And he's going to win in November because he has no opponents. He's had that seat for 20 years now because his his um, his uh, brother-in-law is Hank, the late, great Hank Aaron. So that's how he came into power. He has not written a bit right. He hasn't that written. That is not a good reason. That is not a good reason to elect somebody to Congress, but I get it. <laughs> but right. Um, his... Um, he hasn't written a bill ever, and he hasn't sponsored a bill in 15 years. So he's just keeping that seat warm, making 170000 per year. Um, and so when I looked up the district, the district, I live in a district, it's anywhere from middle class to bar barely making it by. Um, there's barely any Republicans in the district. It's all Democratic. And the Democrats that run against him in the primaries, they're just trying to get their name on a ballot just for their resume. So they don't really challenge him. So I said, "Uh oh, well here comes Demita. I'm about to. I'm about to. If I don't beat you, you're at least going to know right. that you can be touched, right. and you're going to start doing your job." Absolutely. So, so I I wanted to run this by you, Demita, because and and there's a lot of people that's unaware that's that don't think. Well, they don't know that a lot of times when. When they're putting distractions into the news feed, so as so as Donald Trump, Ukraine, and all mm -hmm. sorts of kind of things that follow, but they don't understand that these people sometimes are doing that so they can pet, put something through while you're not looking. And mm -hmm. one of the things that came across my radar was Biden signed into legislation, giving prosecutors, giving them range to prosecute fraud and convict connections with the distribution of PPP. He gave them 10 extra years to prosecute individuals that obtain PPP illegally. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with that law? I'm not familiar with the full statute yet, but I did hear about that. And one thing about the PPP loans, I don't trust nothing, nothing that the government just gives out that easy. I, I, I saw it as a trap from the jump and I have a nonprofit. I have an organization and people were trying to convince me just to, nah, I don't trust it. And sure enough, since as soon as the words, I don't trust it came out my mouth, here came all these indictments. Um, a lot of it comes from people not paying attention to the words. And this ain't even the small print. It tells you clearly what you can and cannot do. And even though they were using it for business purposes, they were still using it on things that was not allowed by the PPP loans. So they'll, they'll you know, we scan through stuff, but we miss some very important lines and that's how they trap us. And then when they make these laws, they're targeting us because they know us. I told somebody else, they know, they know us. That's how they get us. We got to start right. knowing them and that's how we beat them. We have to think like them. We have to be aware of how their minds work and how they work. We what do we call them? Com, um, communizers, colonizers, because they sit back and they study everybody, and that's how they get us every time. And what's what's unknown? A lot of people don't understand. If you lie on a financial inst, uh, uh, document, if you lie, yep. that is a federal crime. That is a federal statute that you have violated, and you can be put in prison for that. Yes. And people don't understand that when they were signed, because a lot of the people had to upload their ID, uh, sign some particular document from a bank stating that you had this business at this particular time. They don't know that that when they go see you got to look at the range. He gave them 10 years. In other words, they're going to go year by year, line for line, person by person and yeah. try to, to to figure out. You know, which group of people they're going to go after or what number of people as far yeah. as probably it's probably going to be based on the amount of the loan, right. you know, and uh, probably people at the lower bottom of the other of the realm. They'll probably not mess with them. They probably I'm just spec the speculation on my part. But I'm telling you guys, if you guys done that and you didn't do follow up and and do all the right paperwork on it. You're gonna find yourself in, in having some problems later on. I've been, I've been involved with the government. I know how they operate, and yeah. and they it took them two years to to accumulate everything they had on us. So, just I'm just saying, and we was only it was just a few of us. So, I right. don't know about ten years. If you find yourself in that situation, 
people find out what statue they're using against you and pay attention to the language and the the only way to beat them is by their own words you can't beat them no other way so right. you want you want to read it, and you might have to read it on this case i was just telling you about it took us reading it at least a hundred times to find his way out of this mess and it was, uh -huh. it was in the words that they said it was in it was exactly in how they worded everything and get your dictionary and just just tear down their words and there's a chance you can come out of this and another thing about the ppp loan it's a loan and so i'm lost on you know if you loan me some money for my business and i've got to pay it back why are you worried about you know why are you worried about what i do with as long as i give it back that's what I and I and I already I know it's meant for business purposes and, and they give you rules, but you also can fight back by realizing that it's a loan. And as long uh -huh. as you followed everything back, you know you can beat them as long as you pay that money back. Because I've seen it happen. I've sat in court with people, and they use their the fact that they paid the loan back by the deadline. You know, okay, I'm sorry, I bought a watch, but <laughs> you got your money back and the interest. So. Why do I need to go to prison? So just keep right. that in mind. It is a loan. Right. So I'm I'm sure you've been following. Also, I'm sure you've been following the story of Nicole Lorena Linton. She was a young lady out of Houston, Texas, that was a travel nurse that ran through the light over on La Brea and uh, and Slauson, and uh, and tragically, uh, six people. She got six counts of murder five counts of vehicular manslaughter with uh, gross negligence. And um, she's facing an enormous amount of time. They gave her a $9 million bail. What was what should be her defense in, in a certain situation? I mean, you know, I know it's just a hypothetical, but she's in a world of trouble because she, she got caught traveling over 100 miles an hour in a 35-mile speed zone. And um, I don't think she's really came up with an explanation as of yet. Right. But, um, I don't know if you have you been following the story at all. No, I have. I did hear about it, but I haven't followed it. But uh -huh. she has to come up with an explanation and everything has to line up to that explanation. Other than that, you know, that she's going to have to pull some case law. There's vehicular homicide in every state. So pull the case and go get into a law book look at as many cases as she can find and try to find one as close as she can to what she did, what happened in her situation. Cause that's, you know, that's the only suggestion I have for her because if, if you can't tell them why you were going a hundred miles an hour, then to them, you just purposely did this. That's how they're going to look at it. So she's going to have to come up with a reason and all of her evidence is going to have to match up to that reason. And then she's going to have to look for case laws of others' cases similar to hers that did this, did something similar. Many people lost their lives, and they got whatever time they got or no time. It's just my, it's just my interpretation of it. I believe that if she was having a medical emergency or something, or something was occurring with her medically, and it caused her to press down the accelerator, like that, then, then she can find her way back to where she need to be. But at this, oh, you know, okay. So she could have been having like a seizure or a stroke yes. or something. So if yes, she, we don't know that for sure. It's just, um, it's just speculation on my part. It could have been a seizure because they ruled out she wasn't under um any substance, substance or you know, under the influence rather. You know, so um. Yeah. If she suffers from seizures, then there, there she, or whatever it is, whatever the medical condition, if this wasn't the first time that she, you know, if it's a seizure, then that's, you know, that's going to be easy for her because I, my sister has epilepsy and she's not allowed to drive because she don't know when it's coming. So if she's behind the wheel and she starts having a seizure, that could be the result. It could take lives or even her own. So if that's if that's what it was, then she needs to show proof that she has seizures. The only thing is if she was told not to drive and she drove anyway. Then she's still liable. She's still liable. 
but it, and I'm just using seizures as an example. I'm, I don't know what else it could have been, but if you have a medical condition that, that you couldn't control, if it, whatever happened is beyond your control. If I'm driving, I have a heart attack and I'm, you know, whatever that, whatever happens, it's not my fault. My, you know, my heart gave out on me, but if I can't show, if they don't do blood tests or whatever and, and show that, oh, she was having a heart attack. So it, it, it's sad because when, when, what I'm noticing about a lot of wrongful convictions is they don't think to get, you know, they're so scared that they don't cover themselves. So, you know, things that could have been te done to help them is too late. So, you know, I don't, how long ago was this? Like a week well, ago? Well, Williams say it wasn't her first time. Huh? She's saying that it wasn't her first time. First time having a seizure? Or that No, situation? I don't know. Because she's claiming that the, the, the lady is going with mental health, bro. Uh, you know, she's using mental health or something. Maybe she was saying because i think she was having an argument they said she was having an argument with an ex-boyfriend or something which would be just even even more you know ridiculous was he in the car like i'm yeah no 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 she was on the phone with him and i think he broke up with her <laughs> i ain't never loved nobody that much to just run down some people i yeah. yeah, that's a I, lot of I, I that's a lot of love that. right there. <laughs> yeah, that's that's some love, serious love right there. You don't want me, so all these people gotta go. I don't know about that one. Hmm. Oh, somebody's saying that she had thirteen accidents. She still has a life license after thirteen accidents. Yeah, that would be problematic, definitely. Yeah, they better. Okay, yeah, they better do something about her because. Uh, Take she she don't need no car, a bicycle, nothing. Get no. She don't need a bicycle. <laughs> she don't need a skateboard. She don't need nothing. She's dangerous. <laughs> she is very dangerous. She is very dangerous. Definitely. So, so how many cases have you been defending lately? Or anything interesting that we can talk about? Well, let me see. Hmm. When you say interesting, I'm not really sure. I mean, I get. Well, I mean, you know, any 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 case that's dealing with us is going to be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to make the decision to kind of not help a case that that's a hundred percent innocent, and um, it's a I, I don't I don't know how many how far your reach goes, but I don't want to say his name because but um, I have a case where. The kid was wrongfully accused. He was only like 15 at the time, five feet one. And the actual killer stood over six feet tall and was grown. And um, But he's doing 227 years in this prison. He's now 35 years old. Now, you, you can imagine everyone doesn't get a good prison experience. Some people really go, you know, he, he'd have been raped. He'd have been stabbed. He'd have been all kinds of stuff. So... Now, it's like I came into the picture three years ago, and when I started talking about his case, they backed off of him, but his mind is gone. So he gets in, when he sees a female guard, his mother would get on the phone with him and remind him, don't don't pay attention to what they did to you. You're still a man. You still like women. You're not gay. You're, you know, whatever. And, you know, and he'll say it back to her. So when he sees a woman, a female guard, he'll be standing there wherever he's at in playing with itself and yeah, they so call now, them right so in his state the youth offender bill can pass and they're giving parole to anyone that was under the age of 17 and under they're, they're giving them parole dates but he can't get one because it is and before i had a conversation with the parole board on him um there's an organization in his state that works with me on um some of the wrongful convictions they won't touch him because no one wants his freedom. They don't want their name on his freedom. So like if my organization is responsible for him being free and he gets out and he becomes a sex offender, then that looks bad on my organization. And he won't stop. And I told his mom, I said, I can't get him out until he stopped. And, he, and she said, well, he's a man. He's seeing a woman. And I'm just like, I'm gonna just, I'm still tell a story and I'm gonna fall back for a little bit, but he gotta get that together. 
Yeah, I totally get it. I mean, you know, because I've been in affairs with people that were like that, and and, mm -hmm. and especially some of the the Montreal, uh boat people came over from Cuba. They had them sort of kind of issues, you know, and and they would uh, yeah. they wouldn't let them go, you know. Yeah. So, and it's sad when, you know, something like that's going on, when he's 100% innocent, all the evidence, the court documents and everything, he just needed someone to get get to them documents to free him. But in the meantime, all this trauma happened to him. So, so I tell people, you know, when you, when you get incarcerated, you don't know what life, what's coming down the road. Your mind has to stay like you're going to be free. You have to keep your mind as if freedom is right there. You can't let, you can't, and I know, I've never been incarcerated other than jail. I've never been to prison. So I, I do know I don't understand because I've, I've not been in any prisoner's shoes, thank God. But from what I see, it's political. And the next thing they look at is your disciplinary report. Um, so if you want anything down the road, clemency, um, commutation, exonerate, anything, it starts with what's happening in that prison. Even if they have you illegally, it starts with what's happening in that prison. Because if you're in the prison acting like you ain't got no sense, killing, raping, doing all kinds of stuff, you're, it's dangerous to let you out. Even if it's their fault, you're in there. Even if it's the government's fault, you're in there. They're going to look at that like, okay, we know we shouldn't have them here, but now we got to keep them. Or now we got to keep her because look at what she's been doing while incarcerated. Mm. So... It was a hard decision to make, and his mom, I didn't, you know, I didn't tell her, but, uh huh? Do you know any good private investigators? My brother was killed about a, uh, by the LAPD, and I hope evidence were lied under under oath. They lied under oath to get the cops off. Also, I feel this re uh, retaliation by the city because my sister was uh man was on the OJ juror. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Can you see that? Can you read that? I can. I can see it now. Okay. I'm assuming he said my sister was an OJ. Yeah. Juror. The v, yeah. The v should be there. Okay. What state is this? California. California? Uh -huh. I don't know any in California, but I can... I don't, I don't know any private investigators in that state. But what would... Do you have any recommendations for him? I, well, what I would tell you to do is to look, look up private investigators. And if you show them what you have, that, that'll... If you have some good evidence... They'll jump on that case and finish it up. If you give them something to go on, they're most likely to help you. But if you just send them out there blindly, they're not going to they're not going to start the case. But if you give them a lead, give them a direction to go in, they'll take that case, especially if you're paying them. So it shouldn't be hard for you to find a private investigator, especially if you're saying you got evidence. You, you explain the situation to them. Show them the evidence. The only thing is, how in, how connected to the LAPD are they? Because if if they got a homie in there or whatever, they might not want to touch it. Because you know, right? I'm even learning that with the court, the people are scary. When it gets time to tap it in corruption cases, they they back off because it can get dangerous. And the LAPD, they some powerful. That's a one of the most powerful police forces in the nation. Uh huh. But that's the best I could tell you. If you have some good evidence that'll give them, yeah, wh wherever you have, if you go outside, if you have some really strong evidence and you show them and you explain the situation, they'll take that case from there. Trust me, they, anybody that's a private investigator that works for money, they're going to take it. But if you give them a good direction to go in, they got it. That's cool. I mean, so... Basically, from um, what they're doing south of Rennie Loke, I see you. So what they're doing down in um, Atlanta with the, the SY, what is it called, the YSL slime? Have you been following that any anymore? I know what you said. I'm sorry. The what? 
down in Atlanta. She's the, by the way, everybody, she's in Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia, right? Yeah. And with the YSL, with the slime, young slime, like with the with oh, the, with the young his name is actually Jeffrey uh, Lamar yeah. Williams, which is aka Young Thug, and then you got Gunner on there as well. Have you been following any of their mm -hmm. any of their I court have. dates? I have. So the way the way it's looking now, and it's it's still beatable, but when when they make their songs, their their music lines up with an actual case. And so, so, I don't know how it even started. I didn't catch that part of it. I don't know how the detectives caught on. But they started listening to what they were saying. And then they would investigate based on what, and every, like if they said, we dropped the body in the river, they go, there's the body. Or if they said, we threw him in the dumpster, they go to the dumpster, there it is. I mean, I'm just using that as an example. But uh -huh. whatever, whatever the whole organization rapped about, they could pin a crime to everything that they were saying. So if they're, I, I, if they're that stupid, because that's what it is to make their music that way, this is, this is how they're getting caught just from their own lyrics. And cause when I first heard about it, I was like, okay, well, if that's the case, go after every rapper that ever was. Cause you know, every, they don't say, Oh, I killed Demita, but they'll, you know, I'm a killer. I'm a, sh you know, my shooters, they, whatever. But no, they're actually, it's actually cases that match what they're rapping about. So it's not, it's not looking good. It's not. Now, young yeah, that, I, I had never heard, I had never even heard of a state statue that, that carried a RICO, you know, but I guess they did yeah. something different in Georgia. Yeah, Georgia has, it's like four or five states that have state RICOs. Uh -huh. Yeah, and it, it's money. They did that for money. But yeah, Georgia is one of the few states that have a state RICO. So if you was representing any of them, what would, what would your advice be to any of them? First, they got to stop talking, running their damn mouth. That's obvious. Yeah. You know. <laughs> well, first of all, definitely everybody stop talking because we have the right to remain silent. So shut up. Um, you don't never want to just get go to a detective and start innocent, guilty, whatever. You don't want to talk. You just want to see what they got and go from there. See what the witnesses are saying, where the evidence is saying. That's why I say it's beatable. Okay, I may have said I did this, that, and the third in my song. But show me the evidence that proves that it came to me. And see, they're getting in there and they're scared. They're getting in there and they're scared. Well, Young Thug, he got a million dollar attorney. So I'm pretty sure he's got him not just sitting quiet, chilling. Let's let this blow over, see what we can chop it down to or whatever. But the ones that don't have the money, they're scared and they're talking too much. So it, it would be a hard group to represent because they always go after the weakest link first in any situation. They go, the one with the, the one that's the weakest is the one that's going to talk because they can scare them. But you, you don't never want to do that. Even if you committed the crime, you want to wait and see exactly what they have. Don't just start talking and don't start signing paperwork until you see what they got. Do you think they charge in duplicity? Other words, they stack the they stack the charges on them versus mm -hmm. it being just a single charge. They sometimes they stack it and word it differently in order to. to it's called form shopping, shopping for a bigger venue. Yeah. Do you think that's what happened to them? Oh, definitely. And it's still legal on every state level. Not on. It's only not, you know, when um, Donald Trump did the um, Freedom of Information Act and the First Step Act, you can't stack charges like that anymore. But on the uh, state level, if you've got a state case, they can still stack your, your charges. Shout out to the business. Well, the, unless your state made a statute against it, but... In Georgia, they can still stack your, your charges. Oh man, that's that's ridiculous. Yeah, so they Colorado can come has Rico as well. Years. Huh? They say Colorado has a Rico Act as well. Yeah, Colorado. I think Hawaii. I think there's a few of them that have it. Yeah, somebody say big facts. They talking too much. Yeah, yeah. That's I'm being they. They're doing yeah. a whole lot of talking on that case.
Yeah. You know, and everybody was kind of like holding it, you know, holding the rail or, or holding the cheeks because they're saying there's more business. They're saying that there's more uh, Rico's coming out, you know, against other rappers. So I don't know, you know, I don't know who can rap about. I guess they want that. Is that a is that a status that they chasing that they yeah I really did that and let me rap about it or you know which yeah. is yeah I mean ask about what happened to Pookie ask your homie and then you find like come on now why are you doing that but yeah they not they not like the rappers I grew up listening to <laughs> you know even even the like dope boys and gang members and all that they different now. They're not like the ones I grew up around or, you know, from our generation. It's a totally uh -huh. different breed that. <laughs> like, they start... Uh, that's, like, a, that's a whole different type of rappers yeah, like, right you know, there. Back you know? in our day, they, they arrest one and he don't... You want the rest of them, do your job. Go get them. I'm not telling you where they are. But now right. they say, they say, if you don't tell us where Demita is, we're going to give you 10 years. And I said, she's at 2301. <laughs> Or if she's not there, she's over there. Like they start. See that sick. question right there. Huh? That question. What do you say? Is sister is that unsolved case that they rapped about? I'm sorry, I really don't understand the question. He's asking. Basically, he's asking, is that an unsolved case that they rapped about? That's what I'm assuming. Oh, okay. It's well, it's it's several of them. It's not just one. It's several that they're linking to the whole organization. So, and it's all because th their their lyrics match. Like if they, whatever they're saying in their lyrics, the the FBI or the GB, the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, is finding a crime that matches it. So if I was going to try to beat it, I would look at the, well, let me see this crime and let me hear my song <laughs> and really, like, I, what what I hate is in a state level, most state um, they put you in a county jail. You're not going to have a law library to sit down and fight your case, and and so it makes it hard to fight for yourself. So it's almost like you got to take this charge, but it's beatable if you if they just know. Listen, let me hear my song. Let me think. Let me slow down this song and really go through the lyrics. Now show me the crime that you said this match. Because they could totally be just making that up. This is all what the, the GBI is saying. Uh -huh. But in order for them to beat it, they have to really try to compare the two. Hold on. And do a DNA test. Let me make sure that that's who you say it is. That that guy's that body you found in the Chattahoochee River is the man I was rapping about in my song. So. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Shout out to the mailroom nation. So um what advice would you offer if you if you can offer any advice to anybody's on here that's you know dealing with any circumstances situations in regards to maybe uh, uh tickets or anything when they're being approached by officers, what advice do you tell some of your clients when you're dealing because some people don't even know how to even deal with the traffic ticket problem, let alone a case. You know, right. do you have any advice? Well, everything, everything you have, you know, I constantly hear people say the Constitution wasn't made for us. Well, when it was written, we were slaves. So, of course, it wasn't. But we are not slaves anymore. And we are citizens and we have the same rights everybody else has. So it's for us, too. So we got to get that out of our head. Um, your your secret weapon is that stenographer. I can't preach that enough. That stenographer is your secret weapon. Every time you see a stenographer fight back, talk whatever you gotta say. Say it while she's typing. If even if it's a traffic ticket, if it's something wrong about this ticket, you say it while you fight the ticket and get in front of that stenographer and talk. This ain't right. I told a man in Mississippi, if if that's not your drugs, then say. It. I think the cops planted these drugs in my car because them are not mine. I need to see the body cam footage and they won't let me see it. Boy, them charges got dropped so quick. Cause all cause he said that. I kid you not. That's, that's because he, he, I, 
he dared him and opened his mouth. You got to open him your right mouth. there. The, 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 he said, Your Honor, may I address the court? And she said, Yes. He said, These are not my drugs. Y'all keep trying to pin these drugs on me. I swear I think that cop pinned him in my car. Can I please see his body cam footage? And up, psh, Gavel got to drop it and everything. But next thing I know, he called me like two days later and he said, Well, I'm out. <laughs> they dropped the charges. <laughs> they couldn't, he couldn't produce the body cam footage, so it's over with. And I said, yeah, I you love, I love stories there. like that. Yeah, it, whatever you, there's nothing stupid, no stupid question, no stupid response when you're in front of that stenographer. That is all you got. So whatever it is, you speak. I, what I do for the people who haven't been convicted yet, I write something out for them to read. And they, they'll say, Your Honor, may I address the court? And I don't care if it take all day, read it. And they start off with, for the record, <laughs> and they just go. And we start off with every constitutional violation. Um, the moment, if you find somebody going to jail, the moment they go to jail, they need a copy of the Bill of Rights and they need a copy of your state's Bar Association Rules of Professional Conduct. That tells them what is expected of your attorney, especially if you have a public defender. Because the Constitution says you have a right to an attorney. It doesn't say it have to be a good attorney. But that attorney has sworn in to represent each client a certain way, and you are a client. So get the your state, whether it's California Bar Association rules of professional conduct. And, and when you address them, you always address them with that rule. Uh, uh, CBA rules of professional conduct rule 1.21 scope of representation says this. Each attorney must represent their client by blah, 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 blah. Well, this is what my attorney has failed to do. And then it'll tell you what the punishment is. And sometimes it's only a reprimand. But say it. I, so I, I'm, I got a guy in there. He's talking about the, the, the handbook. I, I, I got the book without prejudice, without prejudice one on one. He's talking about get the book called Meet Your Straw Man. I'm familiar with the straw man law. But I'm if you're not of, well versed in the straw man law, it can work against you as well as work for you. Well, that and also the a lot of people want to file. Um, oh my god, it was just on the tip of my tongue. Where you? What is that? When you sovereignty? They want to. Uh -huh. A lot of people come to me and they they ask me about sovereignty. Well, on the day in question, was you sovereign? No, let it go. Because <laughs> what they're talking about is the day you got incarcerated. You can't go. You know, I'm not saying you committed the crime. But you can't let them accuse you of a crime, put you in jail, and then say, well, now I want to be sovereign. It's too late. You got to do that before, right. before you ever get into their hands. You got to do that. And and, and that's, right. not even, that's not even a, a sure thing. I don't really understand the sovereign thing. But, you know, it's worked for some people. I just don't know it. So I don't even want to lie and tell you how to do it. But I know if you try to say it after the fact, it's too late. Right. Right. So what would what would some of the letters that you write, what do they look like or what's on them? You know, if you can remember or give yeah. us a. Well, for example, they come in there for with a plea. Um, Melly Mel, uh -huh. you're not going to get out of this. We're going to we want you to sign this 20 year plea. You've been in jail for a week. They ain't gave you a chance to do nothing. So this is what we do. My name is Melly Mel. I've been held in the Los Angeles County Jail now for eight months. I've been accused of this, but they haven't showed me any evidence. The Constitution of the United States says I have a right to see the evidence, cross-examine any witnesses, blah, blah, blah. However, the, the attorney comes in and tries to force me to take a 20-year plea. And this is the most important thing you need to say. They told me that if I do not take this plea, they are going to throw me the maximum penalty punishable by law. The Constitution of the United States says I have a right to a fair trial by jury of my peers. That is the most important thing you can say because you're putting on record that they threatened you that if you did not play, take that plea, they're going to give you the maximum penalty. That way, if you're still found guilty, there's a good chance you won't get the maximum penalty. And if you do, you can get that sentence down when it comes to the appeal because you tried to fight for your innocence and they, they threatened you with that before the fact. So keep that in mind. You always want to listen, pay attention to their words and what they're doing. Um, another thing is um, the speedy trial. You have a time limit in most states. I don't know all states because you have the Constitution and then you have your state Constitution. 
So your state constitution might say a speedy trial has to be done within 90 days. So you need to know that. That way, if that 90 days hasn't happened, then you hit them with the email. If you do not, you know, take give me a speedy trial, then I demand that you let me go. But another thing, almost nobody yeah, I never knows. Got that when people weigh their rights to a speedy trial. I'm like, shouldn't you take the speedy trial because you're giving them opportunity to prepare? Yeah, you're giving them an opportunity to investigate. If they don't have it, that because they're not supposed to arrest us with no evidence. I don't know if y'all know that. They're not supposed to just assume we did something and arrest us, and they do it all the time. So when you go to your arraignment, and nobody does this, but when you go to your arraignment, Demita, do you do you understand what you're being charged with? Is what he asks you. Well, I understand what I'm being charged with, but I don't understand why I'm being charged. I uh -huh. have evidence. I haven't seen anything. So I'm going to ask you right now, if you can't show me something to release me today. Nobody does that. The judge is going to say, well, prosecution, what do you have? Well, um, we're still investigating. Okay, no. Let her go. <laughs> <laughs> God. And you know what? Verbiage and, and understanding the language is mm -hmm. everything because it's you're right. If you put you put it in perspective, you put them right, you put them on notice. Instead of allowing them to put you on notice, you put them on notice yeah. and using the common law. It's this common law. It's this common law. I understand what you said I did, but I don't understand why you got me here. Right. <laughs> so right. unless you can show me what you got. You're in violation of my due process, and you need to let me go. Right, Fifth and Sixth Amendment is a due mm -hmm. process. You're, you're levying charges against me that I have absolutely no idea about. I don't know why I'm even here. Right, I don't even know why I'm here. I'm minding my own business, and y'all picked me out of a crowd. But see, when, when you say, for the record, the judge knows you ain't stupid. So they, they're going to they're gonna get right. I had a case here in Henry County. It was a case, you know, Georgia has changed their law, the right to carry. And I, when I, when they, when they change laws in your state, read why, and this, and I'm saying this for those who's still in prison, if you're in prison and a law is changed and that law has not been made retroactive, go look at the reason why that law got changed. You got to pull the, don't pull the state statute, pull the legislature when, when they say on this date, this law got changed and why? Because in that legislature, it's going to say it unfairly sentenced, you know, whatever. Even if that law is retro, is not retroactive, you just said that you unfairly sentenced me. So I need you to get me back in court so I can get my fair sentence, so I can get my fair trial. Because in your legislature, which will be your newly discovered evidence, by the way, in your le legislature, you said we are changing this law because it unfairly sentenced people by its verbiage. But you're not going to make it retroactive because we're going to want to go back to court and get in, and get out of here. So you don't make it retroactive because we'll flood your court docket. But my newly discovered evidence is your transcript. You said this. Is it true that Atlanta, that they, they claim they don't play baseball over there. They have what, a two-strike situation no. in Atlanta. No, 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 no. That is not true. Georgia is not Georgia is not technically a three states a three strike state. So, uh -huh. I'm sorry. Georgia is not technically a three strike state. It's a, and it's up to the judge. The judge can do can throw you away at the first strike. He can throw you away at the second strike. It's all in the discretion of the judge. And you'll have a judge get right there on the stand and say, I'm going to make an example out of you. So, really? Like we have, we have a case out of Gwinnett County, a 17 year old girl. Now they arrested her when she was 17. She's 18 now. So they sentenced her, but they gave her 120 years as an accessor. Everybody else took a plea, but see, when you don't have money and you don't understand the law, you don't understand why you're an accessor in your mind. I didn't kill this person. I was just there. And so the accessory law, you have to pay attention to the word intent all through it. You intentionally provide the weapon. You intentionally told them to do it. You intentionally was a part of it. Whatever it is, it's all through the statute. If you was just there and you didn't know this was about to happen, how did you, how can you be an accessor? You're technically not an accessor. 
You're not a conspirator. You're none of that. So you have to pay. Don't let them just come to you and tell you that you committed this crime. We're going to we're going to give you accessory because you're not an accessory. If you didn't know this was about to happen, if I go to your house, if you come to my house to get some sugar for me and I'm in there cooking cocaine up, making crack and the FBI is watching me and you just came to get some sugar. You didn't know you're not a conspirator because you didn't know you just damn, I ain't got no sugar to bake this cake. So you going over there. But if you don't defend yourself, they're going to get you. And they're going to just tell you, well, Melly Mel, because you went over there, there's no way you didn't know she was a drug dealer. We're going to call, make you a conspirator. The way you fight them back is you pull that statue, you read what it says to be a conspirator is, and you fight them with that. Uh-huh. Wow, that's... Yeah, they got all kind of loopholes in this law that where they... You know, because and, and you're right. You need a, a black dictionary, and you need the uh, uh, procedures, the rules yeah. and procedures of any um, court setting or whatever state you're in to yeah. understand what's going on in that courtroom. You know, other yeah. than that, you know, man, Georgia laws are ugly. <laughs> you're right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she been in Georgia, right here. God's property been in Georgia, so she know what's going on. <laughs> Georgia is tough. Right, Gwinnett County, <laughs> Gwinnett County don't play. Yep, Henry County, Gwinnett. In Atlanta is still the South, and I need people to remember that. You may be in Atlanta, but you are still. You may be in Atlanta. You may be in Macon, but you are still in the South. Never forget that. You may be in Jackson, Mississippi. You may be in Nashville. You are still in the South. Is that part of what they call the Antebellum South? Man, I, I, mean, I really don't know what Antebellum means, but I don't think it's not good for the black folks. Right. I this um reporter asked me today, why do you think it is that that black people are the majority in the prisons? And I said because it's even the north still had its racism. It was just more progressive back then. But the south don't give, the south don't give a f today, 100 years ago, 400 years ago, they don't give a damn. They will sit there and stare if you they when I come in the courtroom, stop staring. They sit try to get me out of there. What is it? What is it about that? Do they just really just despise the color of our skin, or what is it? it, it uh, they just need people to just be the scapegoat, or or does it just feed the system, the system of money? Because everything is about money. It's about money. It's a, it's all. It's a lot of things. It's a lot. When it gets to, especially now it's an election year, all across the country, we're in an election year. The crime rate is up everywhere. Nobody wants to lose their money, so they want to make it look like they're using it, lose, doing their job. So they'll go into low-income communities and just pin these crimes on people with no educate, barely any education. They'll um, and they'll get them in there, and you know the, the public defender will tell them, "Look, you're not going to talk. It's going to be okay." And basically, they just railroaded the hell out of him, and he had no clue what was going on. He's trusting because he doesn't have much education. He's trusting this public defender. But you fight back with every piece of knowledge you got. Like, I have a case now where I pull the public defender's caseload. I want to see your caseload. Do you even have, I ain't seen you all year. So I, I told him to write the judge and demand that they show me this public defender's caseload. Because I'm fighting for my freedom. If she got 200 cases, how can she help me? So... You don't, nothing is off our fight with every little thing you can think of. So what you're saying, no question is off the table. Anything you can think of to help your defense or help your, your position in there, you got to stand up and, and ask that question or either get it on record. Get yeah. it in the record. Get it in the record. You're in a, you're inside a county jail and you haven't seen your public defender and you can't fight for yourself. Say that. You have no, you won't, in some county jails, I know here in uh, Mississippi, Georgia, I want to say Missouri, you can't mail them anything. Um, you can only send them a postcard. So I write things on postcard. I write the Ten, um, the Ten Commandments, Lord. I write the Bill of Rights on a postcard, or I write the law on a postcard, or I write, I'll send them all kinds of postcard on what I want them to say. There's always a way. But if they don't. Yeah, they speak in legal legalese. You're right, bro. I want to I want to back up because I, I know a lot of people missed this part, but I wanted to bring it back to the attention that Biden five days ago signed in the legislature, giving prosecutors more time 
to charge PPP fraud in connection with the distribution of small business loans. And a lot of people, he's giving the prosecutors 10 years to trace all these loans and figure out who was who was who who obtained them legally and who obtained them illegally. So what I wanted to ask you, Danita, is how would one prepare himself for that circumstance if they was in that in that jeopardy? Well, I, even if you're not there yet, go ahead and get your documents together and go through it yourself and make sure that everything was all the I's were dotted and T's were crossed. Even if you you think that you're okay, do it anyway. Because they're on a witch hunt. If that's what he did, he's on a witch hunt. Right. And right. See, that, they, that's a, that's a, there was a lot of people that uh, filed for those loans, you know what I mean? But what thing you pointed out, that's what they were, just loans and certain documents you have to sign. My uncle yeah. got 42 years of life to keep him from, wow. Uh, so go get those documents, Pat. Read what you sign. Read what you can bring up. Get together what you can prove based on what you signed. Be ready to defend yourself, Jessica. Even if you're good, even if you think I'm good, because they were giving those PPP loans to. They were saying, "Well, I'm a babysitter, or I'm an Uber driver, I'm a Lyft driver, and or I'm this or I'm that." And they say it was okay, but just in case it really wasn't okay, protect yourself. Yeah, because they looking for like once again they looking for scapegoats, fallout guys, people that just didn't understand what they were signing. Because as I know, they was uploading IDs and you know having other people do the loans for them because they didn't know how to fill out the paperwork. And paperwork you don't know, right. you don't know what individuals put in those loans or on the documents. And yeah. you may it may cause you problems later on. Yeah. And they. they Biden just signed in the legislature while everybody paying attention to Donald Trump, Ukraine, and some of the other silly things that these people do, you know, because understand this, people, my people, listen, I don't care if it's the right wing or the left wing, they both belong to one bird, whether it's red, blue, Democrat, Republican, donkey, elephant, they all belong to the same bird. Them people are more together yeah. than they are divided. They will seem divided amongst you but behind closed doors it's a whole different ball game being played out facts. trust me on that facts see yeah. it's called it's not politics it's politics tricks. that's what it is and another thing you know the crack one-to-one -one ratio laws is still past congress and we're waiting on the senate to pass it if it if the senate passes these ogs that's been in prison since the 80s and the 90s and early to they're about to go home so they need to replace them <laughs> so that could be it because it's it's, a, it's political yeah, yeah and, yeah, and yeah. if it passes it's good for everybody in office but they need those bodies back in prison they need not those bodies but they need to replace all the bodies they lose so if they pass right. that that's huge that's going to look good for his administration saying that Biden, under his administration, all these... Uh, and always, always pay attention to the souls because the donkey and the elephant probably are the two dumbest animals there is. You, <laughs> you got to pay attention yeah. to this stuff. So there's a reasoning for all that. You know what I mean? You know, don't close your eyes to it. You know, and, yeah. and I'm not saying that, that politics, you shouldn't vote or nothing like that. But what I'm saying is if you're voting, definitely vote in your local elections because your local elections directly impact you, your local yes. elections. Because if you yes. control your local elections, you control the resources, you control the police department, you control who gets hired. Yep. Simple as that. So pay attention yes. to that part. Another thing, stop voting Democrat or Republican all down the board. Everybody ain't the same. Actually no. know who you're voting for. Now, if it's the primaries and they give you a Democratic ticket and you don't have a choice, that's one thing. But when it's time to actually vote somebody in, you don't want to just say Democrat, Democrat, Democrat. Because <laughs> you are you are doing some, you don't know who you just signed into that seat. What corruption, what they're going to do. You just think, oh, because they're a Democrat, they're good. Dunita, our people vote the same way they go to church. <laughs> well, my grandmama voted all Democrat, or my grandmama went to the to the to the Baptist church, <laughs> and that's yeah. the way they roll. I just I don't get that part, but no, you know, I was raised by a black Republican, 
I became a Democrat when I, you know, when I grew up, when I hit the voting age and everyone was like, oh, black people, they put it in my head that black people are supposed to be Democrat. Republicans are racist, but we're supposed to. But now that I'm actually invested in in the legal system, in the laws, not just criminal justice, but even the laws just all of, that govern us, I see things differently. I see people as their own individual. And like I said, the man who I'm, whose seat I'm going after, he's a black man and he's been in his seat for 20 years. And, you know, people think, oh, he's powerful. No, ain't nobody telling oh, he's very, He's very comfortable in doing what he's doing. He's, he's, he's do right. doing nothing. And so I looked him up. I'm not going to go after nobody until I know who I'm going after. And I said, oh, this man ain't sponsored nothing. He ain't wrote a bill. You Oh, you okay. See, you're Danita, he probably don't even know how to write a bill. <laughs> only thing he know how to Thanks. do only thing he know how to do is create money situations for him to get money on the back end. That's what on he know how to end. do. Right. And he's and you know, he's got Republican friends and you know they do don't don't raise your hand on this bill so it I'll help you on that. They do that type of stuff in Congress and whatever, but you know, I encourage some of you all having in you to get in there and get some of these people out of office. Um, I've been taking, it's free. If you're even thinking about it, if you're interested, if it's a maybe for 20 years from now, go on the um, Team Democrat. Even if you're not Democrat, go on teamdemocrat.org and they give you classes on how to run a campaign. I've been doing that all week. Um, it teaches you how to set up your campaign, how to fundraise, um, how to get your voters. It teaches you everything. And Cynthia, even if you're not, you should be listening to this. This lady is running for Congress. We need yeah. you to run for mayor in Compton, Cynthia. Yep. <laughs> and um, let me let me if tell Cynthia, you. If Cynthia, if Cynthia needs support and finding out things, she can contact you, right? She sure can. She sure can. I want to I want to put something out there. I don't know for every state, but I know for sure for California because I learned this from someone in California. I learned this from Jamila Land. Y'all know felons can vote as long as you're off paper. If you're a convicted felon, you can vote. If your person is sitting in the county jail, they don't have any prior felonies, but they haven't been convicted yet, shoot them an absentee ballot now. Shoot them an absentee ballot and let them vote. Get a paper ballot awesome. to an absentee. A lot of people don't think about that. If you have if you have not been to trial yet, you are technically not a convicted felon. You're just waiting. So you can still vote. Now, once they convict you, you probably, if they find you guilty, you can't vote anymore. But while you're in that county jail and you're waiting on that trial, get them a paper ballot, get them an absentee ballot, whatever you got to get them, and let their votes go ahead and count. A, a lot of people don't think about that. Because we know that Marjorie, oh, that Marjorie Taylor push. Green lady, she's the dumbest, she's dumber than a box of rocks, but, <laughs> 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 and prejudice. And racist and anything prejudice. else. Openly uh, prejudiced. Yeah. Right. But you don't even have to be, y'all, y'all don't have to be experienced. Um, what's her name? The the Span is she Puerto Rican? Um Alexandria Ocasio. Cortez. Ocasio. Yes. She got in she got in her first try at Congress. Right. So never ran a political office at all. So it's possible. So get, get you know. Yeah, she I, ran in New I, York. She ran against New York to somebody similar to your circumstance that had been in there for years. Yeah. Yes. So you know, get these people out of them seats. It, right now, the only way to beat them is with the law. So get in there with the lawmakers and stop these old ass people from passing these retarded ass laws because that's what they're doing. Stop, Marlena. You better sign those papers. She yeah. said. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah, Alexandria Ocasio is her name. Alexandria Ocasio. Ocasio. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, she got in. She's 30, 32, 33 now. But she got in at 28, never ran for any office. I think she was a bartender. So it's all on you. You don't have to have a college degree. You go on to your states, your um state uh California state or whatever state you live in website and look up what it, what you need to qualify for that office. And she, trust me, you'll be surprised. I was sitting here thinking, 
well, I got to finish my degree before I can. Well, I don't even need a college degree. All you got to do is be a citizen. Know what you're state. doing. <laughs> <laughs> right. You just got to live in that at, live in that state for nine years or live in that in the country for 10 years. And then you can run. Be a United States citizen. That's how that's how they want. It's so simple. But we sit here thinking, oh, you got to because when they when they when they introduced themselves, like my name is Joseph Biden, Jr. I was, you know, mono, magna cum laude of this institution. And we're like, damn, I barely graduated high school. So no, nah, I'm not even going to try. But no, nah, it's, it's real easy. Once I saw that, I said, OK, I need to learn how to campaign. I've never done that before. So that's I'm taking the rest of 2021. I mean, 2022 to teach myself everything I need to know. I had already named my campaign committee to elect Demita Bishop. That way I'm covered no matter what I run for. The way they get all these campaign charges is they might say committee to elect um, Marley, uh, Melly Mel for governor. And then when you try to run for senator, you want to use what's still in there and you can't because that was for you to run for governor. Now you got to do a whole new one to run for senator. But if I you heard just say brother, committee, uh huh. No, I heard brother Riza Islam say something the other day about masters, right? He uh -huh. said a lot of people say, "I got my masters." He said, "Yeah, you got your masters. You got your master's name over your name because you've been indoctrinated to think like he thinks. That's why you got your master's name over your name on your oh, degree." Yeah. Yep. I said, "Wow, that was powerful," and he was right. You know. Right. Before you see your name, you see masters. You know right. what I mean? It, it was an interesting uh, take on that. He had a very interesting take on that. You know? Yeah, but, I didn't even think you know. about that. That's... <laughs> yeah. So, and he was, you know, he was saying that you don't, like you were saying, you really don't need all that. You just need to know what you're doing and, what, and why you're doing it. Yeah, it's not okay. retarded. These people know that I've they're, got, what they're doing. I, yeah. I, I do Uber and Lyft now. I, when I quit my job to run my organization, I fund myself with Uber and Lyft. And I get got in a car and I started telling people, I have a shirt that says Demita Bishop for Georgia. Well, what, what, what's that? And I tell them I'm running for Congress and I already got started on my petition. Well, sign. If you think I'll be a good Congress, a congressional leader, sign. And I mean, and it works. I go to every event. When I, when I announced that I was going to run, all the people whose families I advocate for, they was like, oh, my goodness, I'm coming to help you campaign. I'm coming to your party. I'm coming. Yeah, to the we need you. We need someone like you in that Congress room. Uh, so when they see I don't know what state you in, Eric. I don't know what state you in, but if you're in California, the moment you get off a of parole or probation, you have the yeah. right to vote, bro. Same for Georgia. If the moment you get off, you you can go vote the next day. That day, if you, the moment they say you're done, you've paid your debt to society, you can go vote. So go register. You can even run for office in prison in some states. And I didn't even it's know crazy. that. I mean, it's crazy how they frame that. You paid your debt to society, but yet they'll stop you from retaining housing. They'll stop you from getting a job based on the felony. But yet they said you paid your debt. What debt? There's no right. debt been paid. If I can't go get a job and I can't find get a housing based on because I got this, this felonious felony you gave me, you know what I mean? Then right. how was that how was I being, you know, how did I pay my debt, you know? It's just You're like still, they don't raise the you know the minimum wage in Georgia is still seven dollars, right? You got now I don't kidding. know who who's paying that, but I see ten and twelve dollars all over the place. But the minimum wage in this state is still seven dollars. So and then most likely somebody getting out of prison They'll try to pay them seven dollars. And if you had a kid before you went in, you got this child support, you got your restitution, you got your parole fee, you got all this stuff you gotta pay. It, that's how they get you back in there. Cause you start getting stressed and desperate, and then you take your chances and they, they just sitting there waiting on you. Rodney Scott say Alexandria Ocasio Cortez an ex stripper. I don't know about that right there, bro. <laughs> but I, I don't I know. Heard a I have to check it can, out. I, can I say something? I yes. announced that I was an ex stripper. I was a stripper uh -huh. from '98 to 2004, and I said, uh -huh. that, "Let me get it out now." When I announced that I was going to run for Congress, I said, "Let me tell y'all before y'all hear from anybody else, because they're going to go digging because I go so hard." But from 1998 to 2004, 
I was a stripper right here in Atlanta, Georgia. You so sure is a I, smart stripper. Yes. Yeah, hey. A smart ex stripper, <laughs> but you know, because you figured some things out and you understood that you couldn't do that forever. So, no. I mean, I applaud you on it, you know? Right. Well, you're going to hear from me before you hear from them. And I, and, and when I, when people were telling me you should run for office, that was my excuse. And somebody said, just don't let them say it. You say it. And when it comes from you, it's a testimony. When it comes from them, it's scandal. So the right. moment I said it, all these strippers hit my DMs. Girl, you know I got you. Magic City. <laughs> they say it's a party. Yeah, it's a party. I got you, we got, we got one more piece in it. <laughs> That's amazing. But you're doing some amazing work in the in the legal in the, the legal side and also in the nonprofit. You're doing some amazing work. So Thank you. you. That old you can't judge the book by its cover. And I always say this too. I say read because read means re-add. If you break it down, re-add to what's already in your DNA. Yes. And this is the thing we have to learn. We have to learn to read. We can't just skip over stuff. We got to right. definitely understand what is what what is this word in it. And then if you don't understand the phrases and, and, and know how to define it, get the dictionary out. Yeah. Make sure you understand what's going on. Right. A reference book is a reference book. Somebody said, well, say what your mama gave you, girl. That's right, girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no judgments on here. You know, it just shows you that you can come out of anything in life. So, yeah. you know, you can go from anywhere in life. You can be anything and, and elevate. So that's why, you know, I said it had to come out my mouth. Hey, yeah, I have, I have five. Well, at that time I had four kids. I adopted one later. So play with my story if you want to. My story gets more amazing as the years go on. So, you know, that, you know, I know that that's the only way they can get me. They can't get me no other way. So they're going to say, well, is this who you want? And they're going to find an old picture of me hanging off of a pole. And I'm like, damn, is I used to be you? fine. They were like, is that you down that pole? <laughs> Ooh, I used to be fine. Goodness. <laughs> But yeah, that's, uh, but that you know that's obviously, here, no, obviously there. it's real night there right now, right? It's nighttime. Oh yeah, it's it's ten o'clock. Yeah, it's ten o'clock here. Well, I ain't gonna hold you because I know it's late and I know you got other things to do. But be sure to, if I need you, matter of fact, give your information that people may want to contact you or need your legal advice or anything. Can you give everybody your information to where to contact yes. you? You can find me all platform. Well, Instagram is Demita D A M I T A is Fair. Fair is the name of my organization. The acronym is Fair. It stands for Fighting Against Institutionalized Railroading. But um, Facebook Demita Bishop, TikTok Demita Bishop, Clubhouse Demita Bishop. So just shoot me a message. I get on Facebook and um, on Facebook I get on the Facebook Messenger I get hundreds a day. So I wouldn't go there if I was y'all. I, there, you know, there's a chance I might not see it. Um, if you follow me, if you hit me right when you see me drop a post and say, "Hey, check your DM, check your messages," I'll check it. So that's what some right. people do. They see I literally just put a post up. They go right in, check your messages, please. <laughs> um, but the very best way is my email because I check my email every single day, all day, every day. So it's Demita Bishop. D A M I T A Bishop dot fair F A I R at yahoo.com. Right on. We appreciate you. Yeah. And I travel. I come to your court dates as long as you let me know ahead of time. So you don't have to be by yourself. If you have a court date coming up, you this, need, you need man, an advocate this, there. This, this lady just don't say tomorrow travel. I got court. Oh, I pull up. She will pull up. So, I pull up at your court date. I, I get into your attorney. Girl, we got Mr. Danita Bishop that will pull up. I will pull up. I pull up at the attorney's office with my phone with you on it. If they say I haven't heard from my attorney in months, I go to the attorney's office. I tell you to call me right when I'm there. And they'll say, how can I help you? And I hand them my phone. Your, your client wants to talk to you. <laughs> That's power right there. Pull right up on the attorney. You've been playing games. You just yeah, playing reindeer games with the phone. <laughs> right. And then after they talk, I say, the 
whatever bar association says that you have to communicate with your client, let them know, blah, blah, blah. They haven't heard from you in months. And this is documented. Do we need to hit the bar association? Let them know you're not doing your job. They just stare at me and I'm okay. Awesome. Somebody's awesome. life you're dealing with. <laughs> Well, we appreciate you, Danita, and I'll be contacting you soon. We need we, we need to talk soon, okay? Okay. Thank you and for thank having you me on. Thank you for coming on and giving us that information. All righty. Y'all have a good one. Thank you. Bye-bye. Man, May, Mailroom Nation, we had Mr. Danita Bishop in here, but I got to say this, Damu and Kiway. Listen, Damu, Kiway, GDs, BDs, as long as you – your OGs, your triple OGs, and your double OGs, and OGs uh, uh, generations is passive and empathetic and diverted to consumerism and hatred of the things that they created, then the ignorant, the information poor, can do as they want, as they please. Those are who, and those who are left to survive will contemplate the outcomes. That's where we at today. We're letting people contemplate outcomes that really don't have the mental acuity or the capacity of the gymnastics to handle these circumstances. So OGs, triple OGs, double OGs, whatever your status is or whatever you thought you was out there in them streets, man, be that same guy that's on the legal side now. Come back to your communities. Come back to your communities and help these youngsters steer them right. Get them back to, you know, because they want to be right. They just don't have no guidance. They don't have nobody coming. But a lot of you guys are apathetic. You're pretending like you didn't you didn't participate in this game, babe. You're pretending like you never was a part of it or you wasn't that down dude. You didn't have that name out there ringing in the streets. Now you quiet as a church house mouse. It's unbelievable to me when I see some of these dudes, you know, and this is why I say history is medicine for a sick mind, because within history, it has a variety of human experiences we could teach and learn from. And if we don't get into our business about teaching our young, then it'll continue to be what it is. It's wild and loose and crazy and sporadic. That's why you see countless of rappers. Rappers are now, they're the new gangbangers, man. We got more people that die in rap than any other genre of music. Any other genre. There's like five times or 32 times more people die in rap than any other genre of music. We don't even celebrate the old rappers, the, the Kumo D's and the, and the, and the KRS-1's and the Big Daddy Kane's and, and all the guys that came. And the Ice, I mean, Ice Cube still get a little something because he, you know, he used to be in the movie business. But I'm talking about the cocaine, you know, cocaine is out promoting this stuff now, you know. Let's support these dudes, man. They'll roll the Rolling Stones on stage and they be on IV. Needing heart and, and not go listen and get their heart going, and man. And they'll pack a house with 100,000 people, man. You, we'd be lucky if, if, if Kumo D could get 500 people in one of his concerts. So this is the problem we have, man. We are we're so culturally upside down. It is it is it is a shame when you when you understand and you understand you understand at the level in which I have come to understand my circumstances and in my community and the people that surround me, I begin to weep inside and outside. I begin to to feel the pain of the community and the individuals that I grew up with when I see them accuse me of saying things that that I didn't say. You know what I mean? Because some other individual tell them this. And they don't, they don't come get it from me. They get it from them. And then, then when I tell them what I really said, and then you know they just walk away. You know what I mean? I don't know. You know what I mean? All I can do is be who I am, and try to be the best version of myself. But at the same time, when you got individuals coming from the sideline trying to trying to block you, tackle you, you, and that's simply because it just you know, again, jealousy hides in. And 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 uh, jealousy hides in um, well, jealousy hide in compliments. Yes, jealousy hides in compliments. Envy hides in support, and love hides in hate. Just because somebody said, don't mean they got it for you. Always inspect what you expect, and continue to just be the best version of yourself. Because I am Professor Melly Mel, and Professor Melly Mel, if you ask me who I am. About 10 to 20 different adjectives would explain to me. Melvin 
it's just a name. Professor is just a moniker that I, you know, that I, at the studious part, because I believe that science, mathematics, chemistry, physics are, are, are just, and, and, and biology are the five things that move this world more than any other thing. Oh, Melly Mill, forget about the hate. <laughs> man, how can I forget about it, man? It's so real, bro. It is all it all comes from people that looks like me, you know. Looks like me. No matter, you know, it don't matter how much how much positive you give, but you still have to continue in the positive because people are fine. It is like Malcolm X said it best. The moment the black man say something good that's good for his community. They're going to find some other black man to come and down you and, and, and belittle you and berate you for that, you know. But they don't know it's called that indoctrination. Like Brother Islam, Rizal Islam said, you, go, you own your master's, your master's degree because your master's name is up over yours. And you've been indoctrinated into the way he thinks. That's the problem right there. So much indoctrination. Read, 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 read. Re-add to what's already in your DNA. DNA has, has I, I can't imagine how many petabytes of information is in one drop of DNA. You guys just don't get it. And then I'm not saying everybody because nothing is 100%, but a percentage of our people just don't get it. Petabytes have just tons of information. One drop of single DNA has, you guys know what a megabyte is, you know what a terabyte, but a petabyte, it's something that we have in us. And you can't, they can't create a petabyte. A petabyte is what's in your DNA. Now, when they master that, then I don't know where the world will be at that point. But without, without that being said, shout out to the Mailroom Nation. Shout out to the Mailroom Goons. You guys know the vibe. Let's get it. Let's go. City Hood Click. Let's go. Hey, what up? It's a jungle in the ghetto, so you better beware. It ain't nothing but gorillas, high tigers, the best. Pro Max, eyes, eyes, killer for turns. Step foot up in this jungle, leave out in the herds. Cold on, trucker set, city girls, yes, sex, all eyes, no deaths. Full of shells, candle wax, candle lit, bro, the head got shotty shot back. Guess he was real when he died, he ain't come back. Round here, snakes, we gorilla, man, no fear. Bro, his face skin, gave him up, now he back to win. Man, it's head day, on the floor, no other way. In the ghetto, better get you some cake, no birthday. No heart, no love, nigga, what is beat? They can bring you down, bad love, digital your leeway. Might find yourself in the heat, say she. Say, yeah. Every day, all day, yeah. who am I? I say, I'm the hub postman. 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 I'm the hub he was on, I don't know what he was on. I think he was on TikTok and he was explaining that he would never sign a, a, a rap a rap contract with a black person. But my thing is, I'm looking at you, bro. You got this t-shirt on and you got all these chains on. You got that from black people. The rap that you is rapping, you got that from black people. I don't see a bunch of black people running over to be mariachis. You know, I just never seen that, but I see a bunch of y'all running over to be rappers. So what I'm saying, when you say you don't want something, why be something if you don't want something? You know what I'm saying? You're saying you don't want a black person to represent you, but yet you representing black culture through rap. Because that's what rap come from. Rap was created by black people. We are very creative people. We're not a monolith. We create many things and we do it the best. We just great at it and i'm not downing anybody i'm not downing anybody i know the, the, the hispanic community they have many talents and they got people that do things but when somebody get on there it's a hispanic brother and he, it was all based on racism because he say he follow his people and he he just do what his people say and blah 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 but guess what man your people don't even have their right names your people ain't named hector your people ain't named uh sanchez Gonzalez, Alvarez, those are European names. Your people's name was Standing Bear, Running Buffalo, Geronimo, Crazy Horse. 
those were some of the names that came out of the great Aztec. Right after the Aztec people <laughs> was destroyed and conquered by the Aztecs, by the Cortez and the Conquistadors. Learn your history, man. Learn your history, man. The, the white ideologies and talking points that y'all choose to follow. Water fountains, your water fountain, your bench, your your gym or your <coughs> your bottle of water, whatever it may be. Those are those talking points come from white supremacy. And if you adapted them, then you part of the white racist problem that we have in this country. You brown brother. You go listen to Santana, Carlos Santana. He'll tell you where his music comes from. And he's a Latin brother. He'll tell you that. Go listen to all them good brothers, man. Hugh Masked Kayla. Listen to uh, Herb Alfred, matter of fact. Another Spanish brother. Listen to them, man. Because they know the real. And they tell you the real, but you just don't listen. Without further ado, I am Professor Melly Mel, the Hood Postman. You know the vibe. Hood Postman is about delivery and deliverance. That being said, Shout out to the Mailroom Nation. I got to shout out to Mailroom. Yahshua, Michelle, God's property. Yeah, my grandmother is Spaniard. Yep, God's property. Marlena Williams, a postmaster general. Chewbacca came from white folks. <laughs> Marlena Williams. Uh, Derek Mo, uh, of course. Uh, Mayweather, of course. Yes, yes. Uh, everybody that chimed in, Harlem Love, right on Harlem Love, he got black in his DNA. Wow, yeah, see? Yeah, black people are the most, man, we, you know what? It was, it was crazy when I was seeing the dude on there saying the things he was saying, but I'm seeing him looking, he really, like, his movement and everything was, like, like a black person, he had all these chains on, like a black rapper. Then he told him about he's a rapper, but he won't let P. Diddy, Kanye, or none of these people sign. All cap, bro. Matter of fact, where my cap at? <laughs> I should have put a cap on when he said that. Cap. Just cap. All cap. You know? Just cap. You know? But I don't know. You know? Well, I know. I'm just a professor from professor Melly Mail, right? Derek Mark. Mark, Mark Mike Marks, what's good? What you still in there? God's property. Sit your none. You there, Devon Cutmore. What's good? Rodney Scott. I see you, baby. Troy, what's happening, man? And, and Bay, what's going on? Yazzie Bay. He was in there dropping it too. He was dropping that strong man law on us today, man. We gotta chop it up about that sometime, bro. Send me a message over at the Hood Postman on uh, Instagram. The Hood Postman, one word. Well, Without further ado, Marlena Williams, you know what it is. Lock the door, because we are gone.